and we talk about how you can outsource your work to China. Uh, we reveal what Facebook's big announcement was this week, and we also delve into the cool things that we come up with every week. That and more coming up on Tech Talk Tonight. <laughs> This is Tech Talk Tonight, episode 74 for Wednesday, January 16th, 2013. One cool thing. Hello, everybody. Good evening. This is Tech Talk Tonight, episode number 74, I do believe. I'm here, as always, with my inevitable co-host, Mr. Gavin Ray Camper. How are you tonight, Mr. Gavin R? Hi there. I gave Gavin the ability to do sound effects... And this is what it's come to. What did what did the people in our last subreddit of the week say were very um, self centered or something? I think the ability, I think that was a couple subreddits ago, and I think the ability to do classical music was the one that uh, <laughs> the said ability that about to us. do uh, sound effects is just going to enhance that. Does this one end perception oh, from gosh. our users? Uh, I'm good. How about you, Bryn? Uh, I you had, you had another week, another um, you're alive, so that's apparently good. Yes. Um, T minus ten, nine. I can also eight. do sound effects. Thank you. Um, I'm doing great, and after spending, uh, I think you're doing well. Okay, I'm doing actually. well. Thank you. Thank you, Grammar Nazi. Glad we have one of those on the show now. I'm doing great after doing all kinds of different uh, techniques to the stuff here last night, and. Um, that's What's about it. I, I'm I'm worn out and need a vacation. That's what I need. What do you need, Gavin? <laughs> I'm j- I I don't need anything. I do you need, need some, some tech stories? Tech stories. What's what's going? The it's a slow news week, even though CES happened the last week. In general, have you had any other insights about CES since then? Since we last talked, since we did uh, kind of cover that last week, seems like everything is iOS. Right. Every every story is, oh, we have an iPhone app for this, or we have a baby monitor with an iPhone app, or we have a car radio with an iPhone app. washing machine, which we've talked about this before, but I've always had the idea that you need to be able to uh, control your washing machine from your phone, or at least being able to like tell you when everything's done, and that's like a big thing in CES this year that happened. So. I agree. I was telling Katie that tonight that I want... I cannot wait until the day that we have truly smart refrigerators that track when you put... So, like, say I, like, cut an onion in half, right? I use half an onion. Yes. I put it in my fridge. I want that fridge to know how long it'll take half an onion in a Tupperware thing to go bad. And I want it to track all the food in my fridge. And then every night it tells me, okay, these are the foods that are about to go bad, so you should use these. And here's a recipe that uses those exact ingredients bam blow your mind wouldn't the best way for your refrigerator to know when something's like going to spoil or something would to be able to smell it perhaps is there a smelling story on our docket tonight because that would be great no but i think there was one on this american life like a couple weeks ago they went through like the senses or something and they started talking about a robot that was trying to learn to smell and stuff and really they were like teaching it to smell so they have to like every individual smell teach it so so far they only have it like smelling bombs it doesn't know how to smell strawberries yet but I well think that's so tef- de- definitely in the works they're saying that <laughs> well they're hilarious in the chat room but one thing that they're saying is that smelling would be too late and i think i agree with that because you, you what you would be smelling is like what the pre- presence of mold yeah so you'd like you'd smell a lemon or say you cut a lemon in half and then you'd be smelling lemon all the way up until you have mold, at which point you're too late. So I think but you, what need if like, could smell you just need a table of how long things will take, basically. That would probably work, too. So you need the logarithm to know, like, roughly, okay, this is probably going to start to mold at this point, but then have a nose that's so fine-tuned more than your own nose to smell that first spot of mold. Yeah, if you could have, like, a, a, a bloodhound, you could have just one nose... Right. the whole fridge and it would just know 
Speaking of dogs. Speaking of dogs, there's one behind us. Anyway, uh, the other ex- the one exciting thing that happened this week, in my opinion, is the which wasn't really exciting. Tell me if you think it's exciting. Introduction, introducing Graph Search from Facebook. Yes, we t- teased, I guess, the Facebook announcement that was coming around this ne- this well, what was it yesterday? And their big announcement was Graph Search, which I heard people were falling asleep during their keynote. So the initial reaction was. Yay! But now everybody's like blogging about it, and basically, they're is this a new way that they're prying on our privacy and the data that we've given them, Gavin? I mean, it's a cool idea. You can put in any search, not anything, but like um, natural language search terms and say people who live in my city or restaurants near me or photos of my friends in New York or things, and it should it'll parse that string and give you back what you want. So it actually allows you to find the stuff in Facebook where you couldn't before. So is this essentially Facebook using its data mining techniques, but then now allowing them, the public, to use those data mining techniques? I guess. And allow it, you know, easier. Like some of these things you could find before, but you'd have to, you know, really pry yourself through the Facebook interface where now it's just easy to do. I think one like a cool thing, one cool way that they were pimping out saying this is cool is that um you know, people who like cycling, who live in my city, who I went to school with, right? And you can that that gives you four people who you should invite to your cycling, you know, trip or whatever. Uh, that makes that that is a good example of it, I believe. Yeah. I don't know anybody that wants to cycle. However, I don't think I want to um, go back on Facebook. I'm, I'm kind of good without it. Yeah, now, and they're saying, Rob said in the chat room that yeah, uh, Yelp that. was, yeah, that Yelp was sold or something. Isn't that right? Yelp wasn't sold. Their stock went down because uh. they believe this is a different way that people are going to search for what restaurant should I eat at. They're going to get what their friends have recommended, and they don't think y- people will be using Yelp as much. Therefore, stock go down. Therefore, Yelp should try to get out while they still can. Yeah? Yes. I don't really use Yelp that much. I don't either. I guess it's all right. Anybody in the chat room? Do you use Yelp? I'll wait. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, we'll move on. What's the next story, Gavin? Uh, uh, Verizon. Yeah. Is it one of these on our subreddit here? The big story today was that Verizon found a U.S. developer who outsourced his own job. Have you heard of this? I did. I was the one that posted this in the story. And I think this is one of the greatest yet laziest ways of doing things. Do you have it pulled up? Do you have his day-to-day routine? Well, I, I don't know. Do? I don't know if the next web just made this up or if they actually published this. But they said that his schedule was 9 a.m. around in Surf Reddit, 11.30, <laughs> take lunch, 1, eBay time, 2 o'clock, Facebook updates. 4.30, end of the day, update, email to management, 5 o'clock, go home. Basically, he outsourced his own job. He just yes. sat. I get, I don't know if he worked remotely or if he sat in his office all day, but someone in China was VPNing into his computer, programming all day, and then he would just send his management an update. Isn't there security measures around this? Like, oh, I don't know, RSA tokens or stuff like that? Yeah, well, funny you should say that. He actually mailed the RSA token over to China so that this person, this subcontractor, could log in. So thus making this giant security hole in the fact that now somebody in China has this back doorway into Verizon's network, and that's eventually what well, they did said, him in. Yeah, yeah, they said they, they, they found it because they were doing security searches, and this random IP was always VPNing into their network. Um, yeah, so sorry, folks. I guess you won't be doing that anymore but a great idea if you don't get caught because he was what he was making like a hundred thousand but paying the chinese people half of that so i could live off of 50 grand a year and do nothing hell (laughs) that's what you do right now hey anyway hey brayden what's the subreddit of the week this week gavin the subreddit of the week this week I didn't pot up the audio, but anyway, subreddit of this week is, what was it? 
I've forgotten already. It's nothing. It's nothing, basically, because uh, my post got spammed for some reason. So, Gavin, you seem to have an interesting subreddit that you just found. What is it? So instead of that, we're taking a, uh, we're taking a page from the crowd and fo- featuring the I am Arnold, ask me anything, the ask me anything from Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that this just is just happened. a post on ask me anything. It's just a post anything. that happened yesterday. Um, and I thought maybe, uh, I mean, I didn't read it all very much, so this is probably going to end up failing, but I sorted it by top, uh, and top question, what are your thoughts on the current state of the Republican Party? And he gives a interesting answer on that. Did the questions stay more to his political career or did they go to the movies? Like he does have a new movie coming out. Like he wasn't, he didn't pull the whole, um, oh, um. I've forgotten the guy that came on, did an AMA, but would only talk about his new movie. Oh, yeah, who's that guy? They, like, pounded him. Oh. Anyway, that guy, he, uh, I'm assuming Arnold didn't do that. He's got a bigger career than that. But he does have a new movie coming out to where it's his return to Hollywood or whatever since his political career. So he did post. I'm assuming it's kind of for that as well. Mm, he did post a uh, an imager image of just a handwritten note at one point. So that's kind of funny. Or did he do it all like this? Now, did he do, like, did he take questions for a while and take a break and then come back and answer more questions? And to like announce that he a, did that, did he say... Pull a Kevin Rose who did he, did went he, to the museum? No, no, no. <laughs> Would you fight... <laughs> come what? on, no, 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 the, the, the quote. I'll be back. No, he didn't. To see that should have happened. But someone did ask him, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized predators or one predator-sized duck? And his answer was? I would choose the one predator-sized duck instead of dealing with 100 duck-sized predators. I think most people actually pick that. He's he's fighted liquid metal, you know, the T-1000. Because he was a T-600. Was that right? I have never seen that movie. You've never seen the Terminator or Terminator 2? But yeah, so hilariously, he and Rob's telling us in the chat room that uh, on a lot of the questions, he just handwrit wrote answers on his iPad using some like notepad app and then posted the picture, posted the picture on image you are. So can we safely assume that he doesn't type well? My yeah, here he my favorite line. And, you know, someone's going to make a font based on his handwriting (laughs) now, or I hope they're going to. That that, that would they could forge a signature everywhere then uh i don't know guys any other good insights from that i i thought so one thing that i was thinking of this past week was that uh on no agenda yeah they were talking about the coney 2012 guy in their year-end wrap-up and saying like whatever happened to that guy right he he like did this whole thing, everybody knew about Coney to 2012, and then he was dancing around naked on some streets, and then no yes. one ever heard of it again. I want that to be, that's going to be my AMA request. I want him to him to be on an AMA, saying like, and the main Whatever question just being like, be? WTF, dude, what are you doing now? <laughs> Did you go crazy? Well, like, he's involved with one of those charities that, I don't know. We're both no agenda listeners. So is he still out there? I don't know. I I'm haven't sure seen anything is. from him. He didn't commit suicide or anything, unlike other people this past week. Sorry. Yeah, Aaron Schwartz. Yeah, that was the Aaron Schwartz thing was actually a big thing this week. But I mean, that's kind of geeky to get into. It's geeky because it brings up a lot of privacy and stuff issues that you don't seem to want to get into, Gavin. I what? Okay, so if you have you, so you think so, the Aaron Schwartz thing. Lots of people were talking about it. How maybe people. Uh, put the the uh, uh, prosecutors maybe pushed him too much in the in the uh, litigation that was against him. I guess you would say yes, and that could have caused him to commit suicide. No one really knows. Um, for the backstory, everyone should go and read. There's a million stories out there about this that explain it better. But you're saying there's a meme about privacy going out there, and that like people are just trying to put up walls around themselves and freaking out about privacy nowadays. And the only other thing that I had to go off of as of recently (laughs) was Jodie Foster's acceptance speech at the Golden Globes. Now, I played this for both Gavin and my wife, and the first thing that they all bring out is, oh, she's gay? (laughs) I know, right? Like, who knew that? She's 50. 
True. No, that she's, was not what I took from that speech. She's she, gay and she's broken up with her gay lover. That was that's drama right there. That's drama, but it's circumventing the thing that she was talking out against, which was the whole privacy thing and the fact that everybody lives their lives out in the open now with Hollywood because you all do reality shows and all that sort of BS stuff. Like, you, I think you missed the point. Jody Kevin. Foster's acceptance speech for the CCB Demille yes, Award. Yes, that's you. Sorry, I was putting the uh, transcript into the page. Um, no, I thought it was an interesting speech reading it. Um, she only talked about privacy in like one or like a few lines. Though. The whole middle section was like, eh, whatever. So what do you think she was? So, but she's just like, she was making a statement. In my mind, it. she has no authority to talk about privacy because, in my mind, a celebrity, a movie star, basically that's the transaction that you agree to do, right? You, you exchange being famous, having money, you know, being popular. Well, a certain level of pop, you know, popularity. True. For your privacy in terms of whenever you go out, people will recognize you. And that's like the transaction that you make, right? And if you don't want to do that, get out of the business. True. In my mind, that's what but. that is. That's the point. And now, now she's saying that, oh, I, now I can't even go out because I don't have privacy. Like, but that, okay. she wasn't even really saying that. Like Jodie Foster, like her doing this whole spiel is a big thing in the media right now because her whole life, she's been fairly private her own self. That's true. I, you see, yeah, I didn't know much about her. That's why. That's the most I've ever She's read about She's got two it. kids and a lesbian lover for s that we all know now. Anyway, I think that was all besides the point. I think the real big point is here, Gavin doesn't like to talk about privacy. And we all know why now. <laughs> or I'm going to reveal why. <laughs> because Gavin is part of a secret group. Don't get, don't get anonymous <laughs> angry at us. <laughs> Next week, when TechTalksTonight.com is down and pointing to some spam site, you'll know why. That's Can you neither confirm or deny the fact that you are part of a secret group that likes to wear Guy Fox masks? I can deny that. I am not part of that group. I think I have to take this off now because I'm sounding really muffled. It's really freaky, actually. Why? <laughs> who, where, where did that originate? Did that actually originate in England when they were doing that stuff? I wish I could tell you the answer to that. I know this mask specifically is from V for Vendetta. Yeah, yeah. This is which has made it which popular. Which everybody knows. But, yeah, I, the, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's a good history back there. But you should wear it. No, it's it, a freaky it, mask. It scares me. <laughs> All right. Um, the next topic uh, before we end in a few stories here. How do you back up, Brayden? <laughs> oh, Oh, because Gavin. we talk. This is kind Backups. of a New Year's type uh, type topic. There was a uh, Verge forums post on like, what's your backup setup? How do you do things? Like, what's what's the update? What's the latest version on how to how to best back up your files? I know that you should have a constant backup in not only a separate hard drive from the original hard drive, but then also in a off-site location. So in three different places should the backup be. Yes, but do you do that? No. I this don't. person on The Verge was talking about how they um, they have an, a net network atta attached storage in their living room, and they do just smaller documents and images to Dropbox and Evernote, and that's the best they have. Okay. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of my actual documents that I know I'm going to need out in the cloud somewhere. Now, we just had the well, the little demonstration last week of the whole iMac with pulling the plunger front cover and stuff off. That was because a hard drive failed. And I was able to restore the computer back to the way it was from the time machine backup that my mom's running. So that seemed to work just fine. Although she did text me earlier that her pictures or something are blurry. <laughs> I'll have to fix that later. <laughs> Did you forget to clean your smudges off the off the inside of the glass before putting it no, back? No, I cleaned the glass on the inside and out before I took it back to her. But um, uh, something with um, she uses Aperture for photos, and they show up blurry because they're pixelated and not fully loaded at the beginning. Yeah, you have to wait. Yeah, so something with that. Nice. Um. But I think also tying in the previous privacy discussion, there's a trade-off there between do you put all of your information out in the cloud and risk someone hacking it versus 
having all your information on hard drives that you control. I'm sorry, I just missed that. What? Do you, like, sh- do you use one of these cloud-based backup systems? Do you use Dropbox to back yes. up all your software, all your, you know, say you put your tax forms on Dropbox because you want to make sure you don't lose them, but then say Dropbox gets hacked and suddenly your That's tax bad. forms... Yeah. So there's this trade-off in my mind, like, do you want to use these uh, these things or not? I don't know. So do you want, like, okay, we, we all fight with that, I guess, you know. Do we want it secure or do we want it securely backed up? Yeah. Yes. That's the internal debate, and we'll let you decide. Tell us. Tell us what you think. <laughs> what are you currently using? Where is your W-2? Is the fact that my W two's on the work email server good enough for a backup? I don't know. Do you trust your work email server? I don't know. This is kind getting of. boring. A little bit. Um, so, what's your cool thing of the week, Brayden? My cool thing of the week was this, this Guy Fox mask and revealing that you oh. were part of Anonymous. No, that's the surprise that we promised, Doug. Oh. Every so I everyone, that was the audio. Every week, we're going to have one cool thing. I will start while Brayden thinks about his cool thing. Okay. Mine comes from viewer. Rob G in the chat room as I pull it up on my phone. Wiki Voyage. Have you heard of this? No. What is Wiki Voyage? So Rob had this on his chat status, so he doesn't know I'm stealing it from him. No. But um, basically, it's a Wikipedia project that uh, is collecting travel site details. So, like, if you go to. Okay. Uh, I can't find the actual page now. Robbie should link it. Um, I have my one cool thing already, so I don't know what, what's taking you so oh, long. Oh, wikivoyage.org. Okay. So, yeah, you go to it, and you click, you know, here's the destination of the month is Walt Disney World, and you click into it, and you can uh, get information. Well, that one's down. It would be cool if we could see Gavin's screen right now, but he refuses to plug into the VGA <laughs> that's sitting <laughs> right there. Wait, are you? Will you gosh. It's gonna take a second. What what number does it say on there? Two. Two. Dose, dose. You gotta be plugged in before I can switch it. Well, now I have to like. Do, 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 do. All right. That's the stream. What does Gavin all have open in his tabs? Let's everybody look. So, yeah, nope, so this is the go. St. Louis page, and, you know, it's got some background information, climate, and then people will put, like, you know, how you can do bus, how you do the metro, neighborhoods, you know, inside info, what you I should like see, the city museum, the Eads. Br- Why would you go to the Eads? Oh, I guess you can see some... Uh, that's like the biking bridge now. Some eagles there. The gateway arch. You know, so this is just the page for St. Louis. Think about what an intense city like New York or, you know, Rome, Italy would have. And it tells you what to do there and everything. And I didn't know that existed. Did you know it existed? I did not know it existed. Maybe we could use this to somehow promote our city to being cooler than all those other cities that you just mentioned. Is that possible? Uh, No. Anyway, anyway, that's my cool thing of the day. Everybody use Wiki Voyage when you're tri- planning your next tr- vacation trip. And this is my cool thing th- today. What is this? <laughs> oh, the kid in the background. So for our audio listeners... It's a picture of somebody lip syncing to Slim Shady. Well, you know the song, I guess. They can hear the song. But the little brother is mimicking her in the doorway behind her. You need to turn this off. This is horrible. Yeah, this is kind of horrible. We'll put the link in the show notes. How would you find that? I hope uh, one cool <laughs> thing a day. Okay. You told me. So anyway. from now on, this is going to be one of the last segments of our show. I'm going to share a cool thing that I've encountered in my very interesting life, Brayden, conversely, will go to onecoolthingaday.com and show whatever is there. Or I'll go on Reddit, maybe, and find something cool. Here. Here what? Co- I, have, I have a 
Do you cornucopia have of cool things. Do you have something that grinds your gears? Oh. Uh, no, you're just going to make loud sound noises. Another cool thing, I won't tell you tonight, but it's an app. It involves video, and it's really cool, so everybody should check out our show next week. And with yes. that, I'd say we should wrap it up while you say, Brayden. I say that's an excellent idea, Mr. Gavin Ray Camper. Um, you can always find me out on the Twitters, and that's where I'm spending a lot of time these days because I gave up the Facebooks. So go check me out, at Braden H. It's kind of my public profile. But since you guys <laughs> since you guys are my intimate personal friends, go check out at the real Braden H. Um, that's where I've actually You need to change your to. lower third when you say that. Yeah, thanks. Um, but Where can if, they find you, Gavin? Well, everybody can find me at twitter.com slash Gavin R, but if you like the show, if you don't think we are self-involved poopy heads, which is what all the classical music fans think we are, <laughs> you should please go to techtalktonight.com and check out the right-hand bar. That's where you can um, He's sub- a jackass. subscribe to us on iTunes. You can uh, subscribe to us in a normal podcaster uh, feed. You can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter. Get all the updates for when we're going to go live, which is usually Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time or Central Daylight Time if we're in the summer in the United States. That's very much the case, and we're going to make it the goal to update the Google Plus page this week. That's going to be my goal, at least. I'm going to drag Gavin into it as well. So for one last time, I want to say goodnight to everybody, and thanks to our wonderful chat room. You've been lively tonight, as always, and there you are. Uh, Gavin, say goodnight. See you later, everybody.